So uh, now we're going to move to our next uh, two speakers, the last two speakers of the, the first session. So uh, our speaker is uh, Dr. Naima Bantari. I'd like to welcome Dr. Naima. She's an assistant professor at Sultan Qaboos University in Oman. She's an Algerian architect and urbanist who taught and practiced architecture in many countries, including Algeria, Tunisia, France, Oman, etc. Dr. Bankari is an international expert member at uh, ICOMOS and a heritage consultant for the Ministry of Heritage and Tourism in Oman. She's also an associate research fellow at the Institute of Industrial Science, University of Tokyo. So uh, Dr. Naima Skari, uh title, as you could see her presentation, is uh, the cities of Mzab, a millenary example of community-based urban development initiated by refugee groups. Uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Naima. The floor is yours and thank you for joining us. Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Majdi, for this uh, introduction. Um, and uh, so I will skip my own introduction. Um, also, I must thank Professor um, Jamal Munam and um, Dr. Majdi Falah for giving me this opportunity to share and hear from my colleagues. Uh, my talk today is about the millinery cities of Wadi Mzab, um, an urban and architectural heritage listed by UNESCO as World Heritage Site in 1982. Um, these cities and their architecture have been the center of interest since several decades now, but the look and the approach I suggest to have in the present talk is somewhat new, since it, aim, it aims to explore the process of their formation by what we could call today groups of an ethnic and religious minority displaced from its initial uh, lands by a uh, ruthless uh, armed uh, conflict. Uh, my talk will be articulated around the points that you see after an introduction. I will uh, introduce who are the Ibadis and what is the uh, Ibadism and this community. Then um, a quick introduction to the urban civilization of Mzab, the social and religious structures behind it the regulation and precepts that govern the built environment, some aspects of the urban organization in the Mzab cities, and then some takeaways from this experience. And actually, I'm, I'm very uh, happy to, um, to speak right after um, uh, Aida and Amal, uh, because I think my, my speech, although it is um, anchored in a previous experiment, experience that is more than a thousand years old, uh, it, it is really echoing all the questions and the problematics that we are addressing nowadays, whether at the social or heritage level. The conference we are participating in uh, today is about the ways to connect with heritage and how to promote it as a legacy, as a foundation to build upon one's identity. Heritage is also a common source of information and a place where to look for past experiences and tap into these to build skills and develop approaches to address the challenges of the present. This is even more valid when we speak of a World Heritage Site supposed to have an outstanding universal value. So my look to the urban civilization of Mzab today takes the perspective of exploring the process through which a Muslim Ibadi community of refugees has been chased out of its lands and cities and how this community has settled in a different uh, and much inhospitable geography to hide and defend its existence, then develop its own civilization, uh, which reached us more than a thousand years later. Not only it survived and remained the habitat of the Ibadis until today, but the cities of Mzab incarnate and represent um, refined examples of uh, concepts that we hear today, like uh, garden cities, Ville Nouvelle, developed through a very well structured participatory planning process and urban governance. The cities of Mzab could even be equated to the so called time based urbanism, such as the recent buzz concept of la ville du quart d'heure, without neglecting innovative. Uh, farming and irrigation system, and even circular economy. In this talk, 
uh, I would look to the cities of Mzab from the perspective of community-centered urbanism, where the community is in fact composed of refugees. The objective is to open a debate on how refugee, refugees can take control of their destiny and develop their own built environment that fits to their immediate needs to be protected, but also to fulfill their important needs, which are human dignity, cultural identity, and rapid independence from humanitarian aids. My approach today to the urban civilization of Mzab resonates with the core of the aims of the Engage Network, especially for uh, the need of displaced people to be uh, due to armed conflicts and uh, the identity loss that follows the dramatic displacement almost systematically as explained in the different interventions since yesterday. Um, in their great respect of tradition and their uncompromising religious conservation, the Mozabites were able to create um, uh, their cities and preserve their authentic architecture. Their urban organization and their art of building uh, are impressive as much by their perfect adequacy to the spiritual and, materi and material needs of the inhabitants as by their continuity during more than a thousand years. So who are the builders of urban civilization of Mzab? Before settling in the inhospitable valley of Wadi Mzab, the Ibadis of Maghrib were united under the banner of the Rustamid state for more than a hundred and a half years. They had succeeded to creating the real Ibadid state in North Africa, politically independent of the first nucleus of Basra, but having very strong diplomatic and scholarly ties with it and with the other centers of Ibadism in Al Jazeera. The second half of the eighth century and the first half of the ninth correspond to the period when Ibadism experienced its greatest expansion among the Berber tribes of North Africa. At its peak, this Ibadi state, whose boundaries are still unclear, stretched from Tlemcen, currently in Algeria, to Tripoli, Libya, and to the south of Tunisia, passing by Tahar, Sersu, the oasis of Wadirigh, Wargla, and Tugurt. In 909, Tahar, capital of the Rustamid, uh, as well as the whole Ibadi country, were conquered by the armies of General Abdullah Shi'i, who founded the powerful Fatimid states, state on the ruins of the Rustamid, Aglabid, and Midrarid states. After the final assault of Tahart, it was the oasis of Wargla that welcomed the greatest number of Ibadi refugees who came to follow their imam. These Ibadis gathered in Isidratan or Sadrata, ruled by the last Rustumid imam who established there an imama of defense, Imam al Difa, and which did not last for long. The weak imama was dismantled and replaced by a council of representatives called Wujuh or Ayan or Akabr. In the 11th century, the Ibadi imamate uh, mutated to the state of secret, Kitman, under the tutelage of the organization of Majlis al-Azaba, a governing council composed of elected Ibadi scholars from the community. It was not until the dawn of the 11th century that the Ibadis from the Rir and Sidrata began to form new settlements in existing uh, uh, Mzab region, an area that was intermittently inhabited by Zanata, Mu'tazili tribe, who eventually converted to Ibadism. The first Ibadi nucleus in Mzab did not uh, cease to welcome the other Ibadis from the Maghreb because they kept being sequestrated by the Fatimid and their armies until the complete formation of the seven cities of Mzab. The Ibadis are among the Islamic schools of thought, Madhab. Its main principle consists in the observance of Islamic precepts as introduced by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the respect of equality between all community member members, and most imp importantly, the democratic ruling system based on shura and bay'ah with no regard to the ethnic origins of Muslims. The Ibadis who urbanized the Mzab region were already great city builders. They built Tahart and Sadrata and other great cities, ornate of palaces and gardens, 
However, this operation was not devoid of their great religiosity. In his book about uh, Mzab, Marcel Mercier declares the constitution of a city was not for them the ibadi that is the result of chance. It was carefully thought out, deliberated, and then carried out. This operation took on a mystical and military form, which could recall the methods of our ancient religious orders. Any settlements established by the Ibadi community while in its state of Kitman is a judicious balance between the religious power of al mashayikh the Azaba, and the parallel power of the representatives of the Ibadi people, al-Awam, or al-Jama'a. In most in instances, it is the religious which supersedes over the Jama'a decision. The religious structure are composed of three entities. The Halqa of Azaba, also called al jama is the supreme religious organization which manages the community life of all Muslims. The Khasa and Amma. Khasa being the like people, the uh, local community, al Amma are the scholars. And it owes its respect and obedience to al jama or Halqa al Azaba. This Halqa has a female counterpart called the Timsiridin or Yazabin Assembly which manages all the issue related to the female realm in the community. The second level is the students in theology and jurisprudence called Irwan, and the lowest is Imsurda, uh, who are uh, young students in initiation in the religious and uh, other uh, sciences. The social organization, however, is entirely represented in the physical organization or of the city or Qasr. It starts at the lowest level with the extended family, Al-Layla, which is physically represented by the Tedert or Dar in Al-Qasr. Then Al-Ashira is the fraction, which is the basic administrative unit in the social organization of the city. Its main role is to secure inclusiveness of all community member, members through the practice of takaful or symbiosis, an elected leader called Muqran will represent each ashira in the meetings of al jamaa of the awam. al qabila is the intermediary between al ashira and Al-Arsh. Its political importance is not major in Zab first groupings, but the solidification of several qabail forms Al-Arsh. The entire territory of the city, Al-Qasr, is the spatial support of the social entity called Al-Arsh or Urush. This is an adaptation I have made of the initial diagram developed by André Ravero to describe the social and religious structure of the Ibadi society in its Qasr or city. We are in presence of a well-structured and stratified organization formed by election and representing the two components of the community, the religious and the civil society. In Amzab, decisions regarding the community were directed by the Azaba or their representatives. In what follows, we will see the main stages of the creation and expansion of the Ibadi city in this region. As mentioned earlier, the everyday life of the community, including the construction and management of the city and its buildings, is managed by the religious, by the religious precepts. They are scrupulously documented in the large juridic corpus of the Ibadis. For the construction in particular, I can refer to Kitab al Qisma wa Usul al Aradin by, by Sheikh Abu Abbas Ahmed al Nafusi, Kitab al Nil and Risala Shafia fi Ba'd al Tawarikh by Sheikh al Fayesh, and Kitab al Takmil by, by Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Brahim uh, al Thamini. My research for the PhD, of which a book in two volumes has been published in 2014, as well as several articles have presented and analyzed this important regular, regulatory corpus, which addressed, addresses the built environment produced by the Ibadi community. When settling in Mzab, the Ibadi sought defense and proximity to water. They set, uh, they set up their cities along the valley of Wadi Mzab on peaks or ridges in order to avoid the violent floods of the Wed and take advantage uh, for their agriculture of the water and alluvium that collects there. In the slide, you can see the five first cities with their date of establishment. They will be followed by two other which are located much further in, in the Wadi. 
This is the most fertile lands where planted uh, with palm trees and other fruit trees. Dams, wells, and very complex irrigation systems were designed and implemented in order to collect water and distribute it equally on all terrains. So how was the Mozabit city established and how did it evolve? Entrepreneurial people gathered with at their head a sheikh renowned for its spicy and courage, surrounded by a halqa made up of his disciples and devotees, leave their temporary refuge to look for a new place to settle for a long term. They choose a site in particular on the basis of its defensive properties in order to build their city there. They draw the outlines of their future city. The extent uh, it was to take was very clearly defined by the Ibadi laws. It is defined by the distance that can be covered by a walking middle-aged man between the call for prayer and then and its beginning, which, is, which lasts for around 15 to 20 minutes. This is pretty much what the urbanist Carlos Moreno is advocating in his concept of the city du quart d'heure that he first tailored for the city of Paris, then he generalized in the concept of his book, Droit Cité, he uh, published in November 2020. At the top of the peak that the city was to occupy, the founders began to build the great mosque, El Jama, also called uh, the center of the city. At this point, this mosque was to be not only the sanctuary of the cent uh, of the uh, and the center of government, but also the arms and food store, the military headquarters, the administrative center, because nothing around has been done yet. In order to protect the early constructions, the city wall uh, uh, was to be erected just after the mosque. The next step was to draw the, the broad lines separating future neighborhoods in the city, lines that will later turn into ramified network of streets, alleys, and dead ends. The districts then, thus delimited, were allocated by a law emanating from the Halqa of Azaba to different factions, Ashira, that were to populate the city. The leaders of the fractions, in their turn, were responsible for granting each family a plot whose size corresponded to the number of its members. The deeply egalitarian spirit claimed by the Ibadi doctrine and developed by the Berber tribal traditions requires that everyone participates in the construction of the Qasr, its houses, and its equipments without any distinctions of social rank or fortune. <clears throat> Logically, this first city core is already more or less economically autonomous because it is assumed that its palm grove, which preceded it, is already productive. <clears throat> the political admini and administrative autonomy of the city closely follows its economic independence. And this is what is claimed by Christopher Alexander in his pattern language that the economy is an, is, is an essential component of um, a well-established um, city. If the need for defense and protection necessitated their refuge in Zab, it is the religious considerations above all that have favored the growth of their cities. As was the case in Tahart, then in Sadrata, the first cities of Zab became, since their inception, the center of immigration for the majority of Ibadis of the surrounding area. Thus, the Mzab Valley has seen its population increase by the multiplication of its first inhabitants, but also by the great waves of immigration that was welcomed. This fairly significant demographic growth caused the expansion uh, of the existing cities, and in some cases, the creation of a new towns. Whenever they had to expand their city or found a new Qsar, the Muzabid followed these same steps, and the Azaba tirelessly ensured that the tradition set by the Ibadi prescriptions was respected. With each extension of the city, its enclosure is demolished, then pushed further in order to identify the new parts of the city. Often, a prominent concentric street takes the place of the old enclosure. The slide shows the successive expansion of Qsar of Gardeya. The dark dot with the number one represents the great mosque at the center. The number three is the souk, the only large void in the Qsar. And the bold lines show the city wall. The black lines represent the ramification of the streets and all the white is the massive constructions. The urbanization of the Mzab Valley can be defined in terms of a system reproduced in several copies over a short distance. 
This system is made up on one side by the Qsar city surrounded by its ramparts and whose fabric is very dense and compact. Then on the other hand, the agricultural development, the palm grove installed uh, on an alluvial aquifer and supplied with water by a complex system of irrigation. The seven cities of Umzab Valley follow a similar organi organization, but they cannot be reduced to a single model. These cities had organic and rigor rigorously arranged structures that make them function like human anatomy, to use the metaphor of the great theorist of Islamic city, Al-Farabi. The cities of Amzab are for the most part perched on hills, the highest point of which is often marked by the minaret and the great mosque. Their plans show elliptical or voidal shapes, the major axis of which depends on the ownership of the land to be built and the topography of the site. The great mosque is to the Qsar what religion is to the Ibadi community, which as we have seen was made up of different tribes and peoples strongly attached to the belief and practice of this madhab. The great mosque is locally called a Masnagram, um, uh, sorry. Uh, the center of the city uh, is clearly did indicated um, uh, the, location, the location of the most at the center of the city is clearly indicated in the Ibadi fiqh regulations reg uh, related to the construction. The urban fabric of the Qstur of Nzab is extremely dense, as I said, and the streets, alleys, and all the connections are very narrow, connecting the dense, um, the dense constructions. All the uh, relationships and transactions of construction are regulated through the Ibadi fiqh uh, by the Azaba. The street network of each Aqsar follows the topography, as I said, and uh, the ramification of streets allows, the pe allows to screen the people who stays in the outskirts for the market and who gets inside. On the outskirts of the city near the wall comes the souk right before the precinct of the walls and the market square is the only significant void as I said. It is purposely put at the outskirts of the city because it should be protected by the towers and uh, uh, keep the, uh, the people with whom they are having um, uh, transactions, keep them outside of the sun. The Qsar is systematically surrounded by a polygonal enclosure guarded by uh, towers. An important component uh, from the outskirts of the Qsar is uh, also the symmetry that is part of the Ibadi town planning. The symmetries with their mosques are an important com component also in the social uh, activities, especially when it comes to the tekeful or symbiosis activities that strengthen the uh, social uh, ties. Also, the symmetries allowed because they are properties, waqf, musha'a, they allowed the control of the urban sprawl uh, to, um, to go beyond their limits. The palm grove, known to the Mozabites as Al Ghaba, today forms a kind of appendix appendix linked to the agglomeration, which um, ended up investing the bed of the wadi and its edges. Originally, Al Ghaba formed a completely separate, uh, if not opposed entity to Al Qasr, and was often located a few kilometers away. The, the Mozabit established their oasis as close as possible to the groundwater tables. They have equipped them with a highly developed network of collecting and sharing and reusing and recycling water. Very sophisticated uh, dams and irrigation systems. What about Mzab Valley today? From 18,000 inhabitants in 1896, the region is uh, populated by more than 3,000, 3, 3, 160,000 inhabitants today, 60% of which are Ibadis. The urbanization of the Mzav Valley continues much less on the same model as we have just outlined. Under the pressure of uh, ever greater population growth, it is today almost continuous over 20 kilometers. Many agricultural lands have disappeared and the expansion became much less controlled than before due to the different political uh, transformations. The most prominent character of this territory is that they have never been abandoned until today. This model has proved to be so much successful that new Qsar, such as Tafilalt, 
have been built as a form of the new developments. As a takeaway from this millenary experience in Mzab, especially applicable to situation of population displaced to, due to armed conflicts and in order to make of their hopefully temporary status a ref, as refugees, a more human and dignified experience. The following points deserved contemplation. I have organized them into main, two main topics. The first one, spiritual and social principles, and the second, physical and structural strategies. In the spiritual and social principles, we have to build a community centered around common genealogic, religious, ethnic, or national affiliations, or even narratives. Establish a democratic, organized, and recognized social religious structure to secure the good management of the city through participative planning where written regulations inspired from the common religious and social codes to manage the built environment in all its forms, functions, and scales. Embrace, really embrace the principle of symbiosis, take effort, which must be supported by the religious precepts and the social organization. As the architect Hassan Fathi says, one person cannot build one house, 10 people can build 10 houses. And this concept is applicable in all aspects of human activities, uh, cleaning the roads, harvesting the lands, taking care of children and elderly. Such concepts have proven to be extremely efficient in reducing inequalities. The religious spiritual belief is the measure that regulates the society, in the economy and the education. As for the physical and structural strategies, they consist in using the site in a way to secure defense, availability of water, and from where it is possible to reach the main, the main trading routes. Build compact cities on the, um, on the least arable lands and develop agriculture in the fertile soil. Use water wisely and equally. The city should be compact and limited in its area to be traversed on foot in a limited time, 15 to 20 minutes. The place of worship dominates the urban profile and located in the geometric center of the city at the heart of the social and political life to galvanize the solidarity and symbiosis and harness the idea of working together to get out of the situation and improving all lives with no one left behind. It is also a mean to preserve the community's identity it's a humanity even, and educate healthy, balanced, committed, and productive younger generations. Recycle and reuse all byproducts of this city and its activities, circular economy. Inculcate the concept of sustainability and that we have been created to populate this beautiful planet and live in it in harmony with fellow humans and all other creatures in the most beautiful way to live uh, in the most beautiful way and to leave it rich and healthy for, for its future uh, users. And this is a list of references and I thank you very much for your attention.